I see you wearing a whoop strap. I am. I'm wearing my whoop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, um, is, is do you find that that's a good way to kind of stay accountable to your recovery, to what you're eating? As well? and it's a good way to kind of look at it. Yeah, well. I think it's very accurate. I think it's more accurate than my um, Garmin resting mm-hmm, heart rate mm-hmm. wise and um, HRV. That's right. Yeah, heart, yeah. heart rate ability. Yeah. yeah. Um, as well as your sleep. I find your Garmin sleep isn't super accurate, whereas this is like bang on. Mm-hmm. Um, and interestingly, we actually had our first Pfizer jab on Monday because yep. any Olympic hopeful um, is getting them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my resting heart rate, you know, is normally in the low 40s and my uh-huh. HRV is usually um, – Kind of, I mean, I find it obviously varies, but yeah. let's go 140 to oh, wow. 160. Um, and my heart rate was low 50s and my HRV was down really low. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, like, I, it That's was a trend. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I felt okay from the Pfizer jab, and I think it's number two that's supposed to knock you around more. Um, oh, interesting. But clearly, my, my internal, like, inside of me was being like, uh uh-uh, uh, you aren't, you aren't okay. And a lot of other girls reported, like, felt like they had their heart beating yeah. out of their cheese, chest. Um, and yeah, it impacted different people. Did your recovery score go down as well? Mass- yeah, yeah, my recovery on Tuesday and Wednesday was red, and I haven't oh. had red. I've had it, I've worn it for now maybe three months, and I like was sleeping properly, but clearly my body was just you know. Under the Did pump. your so those who don't know, whoop strap just kind of you wear it as a wear it's a wearable strap, and it takes into account heart rate and heart rate variability, all sort of different metrics, and takes into account how much you train, um, your activity level and then spits out a recovery score and how well you sleep as well and spits out a recovery score and then based off that recovery score it gives you a target of strain how activity you should do for that day so that's kind of correct yeah that's and then good. it's yeah and then you can kind of go above that score and it's overreaching but then that will diminish your recovery the next day because obviously your body isn't able to recover and then it gives you a good little bit of guidance with sleep recommended amount of sleep you should get based off your activity for that day I love it. Yeah. I think it's really good. It's kind of kept me a little bit more accountable on my own training. Mm -hmm. But I find it funny, a little bit funny that we have to kind of go as a kind of society to wear these things and make kind of exercise a game. I kind of gamifies that a little bit. I think Whoop is a little bit less like that than something like a Fitbit or or something that, you know, you need to reach 10,000 to 12,000 steps or that sort of stuff. But I love it. I think it's really good. For me, because I, I kind of look at it and, you know, a little bit health scientists and that sort of stuff. So we can look at it and go, okay, we can analyze it a little bit better than someone who doesn't. But I, I think it's really mm. good. And I've had one of my worst recoveries. I think I've gotten down to 5% recovery. Jeez. I don't know why. I just, yeah, right. I just had a really, I think I didn't Poor have a good sleep. sleep yeah. Didn't eat well that day. Yeah. I think I trained pretty hard the day before that. Yeah. I just had a shocker. Yeah. But I, I also, I use the journal function. Yeah, which is great. As well, mm-hmm. which I love. Mm-hmm. And talking about stacking habits, I never did it for the first couple of months. Okay. And then I always did it because I ended up doing, I started with, because you have to, because when I wake up, I don't set the sleep. I just kind of let it auto detect mm-hmm. sleep. And then when I wake up, I always press um, auto detect. I just, yep. when I wake up, open the app and I'll go, um, detect the sleep mm-hmm. and then as soon as it comes up my gives me a notification when it's ready my recovery is ready to view and then it automatically the journal pops up and I put in um, what I ate or was it the you can get in how many was it the few of them you can put like anti-inflammatories you can yep. do how much caffeine did you wear your um, blue light blockers all this sort of stuff you can kind of pick what you want in your journal and talk about I've been doing the last couple of months been eating a majority a meat based diet so okay. a little bit of some pumpkin um, some carrots some like low level sort of stuff but high fat high protein based diet and the last I think the last 50 days I put it in my put it in my journal my REM sleep has increased by 20 minutes wow there you go so that's a little there bit of stats that gives yeah. out to you. yeah cool. which obviously increases recovery and obviously your fitness as well because yeah, you're recovering but right. you can train harder interesting yeah there you go. that's why i love cool. it for that reason yeah and i mean i've always, i've always wanted to journal and mm. it's something that i find i don't do because i don't have a good you know habit and way to stack it um and yeah that that thing that pops up it's like if you do go out of it if anyone who uses a whoop it's like oh that guilt trip of like oh I'm like I, I can't be bothered today it's like no you know what just spend it doesn't have to be you know an essay it can be anything yeah, it can be yeah. you know what you eat or how you felt or had a really good day or a really poor day um mm. and yeah i think it's a, a really good a good reminder to to get your journaling in which is good my um your training is what is your activity do you set up for when you do your trainings it auto detects it auto detects it, it yeah. yeah yeah what's kind of the highest strain Ooh. you've had 
I think the highest you can get to is 21, highest isn't it? Highest you can get to 21, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's like your yeah, heart rate has to be up for the whole 24 hours. The entire hours. day. Yeah. They did an April Fool's joke yeah. and I didn't understand it and then I read more into <laughs> it. I was like, oh, that's a joke. I didn't get it. I was on like, social media. Um, I reckon I've hit 18 a fair few times yeah. and then I reckon in one session and 19. But then some days Oof. like... Yeah, it's off center. You know, yeah. yeah. I reckon Darwin, we were getting pretty pretty high yeah, and in wow. Perth summer as well like it's pretty oh, yeah. warm I did, have never worn it for a pre-season and okay. I would love to know um, how high it would get through a pre-season because some of our running sessions we did well Olympics take one and now take two were pretty awful yeah so I've yeah. worn it for one of our um, Muay Thai sparring sessions oh. for an hour so this is an hour my the strain I had was 14 in an hour wow oh, yeah there it, you go because it's not so much like you get like we were doing three minute rounds and then it's 30 seconds and then we're straight into the yeah. next partner so that that's tough as well but then it's obviously a lot of it it's like um is mental as well because you're trying mm-hmm. to read what the other person's doing and then you try to act so you're not actually active for the full three minutes yeah. but it's, it's you kind of just load. You're, yeah. you're mental load and you kind of you stiffen up as well yeah and there's a, there was a study come uh, out i don't know how long ago but with chess players ah. and they're saying their metabolic rates are through the roof but they don't exercise but it's all mental wow. exercise because how could they're trying to read on a three or four yeah. moves ahead of the other um, opponent. There you go. It so might that, take up chess. <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah, my, very challenging. I still have a bet. My brother and I have this competition. He's yeah. almost like a hundred, and I've gotten one, but he refuses wow. to. He doesn't okay. give me that one. There you go. Wow, it's interesting. You have to just study brothers. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I, 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 have you played much chess? No. Nah. Nah. It's I so think hard to read. Terrible. I don't even know which way you can move the certain ones, and uh, they I don't even know the pieces names. I love. I love how right. difficult. I just love things that are hard. Mm. I love things that are hard and it's so difficult and in, almost in hope hopefully he's not listening but almost in awe of how good he can he knows what i'm doing before i know what i'm doing yeah that's just amazing yeah 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 and you see that on a, like on a sporting field as well when you see those players that read the game so mm. so well and you you know you think you're gonna pass it there and they're already there and you're like oh, wow like you know have you preempted that have you watched so much footage and that's what i think we it'll be interesting coming back into international competition these days yeah, right. mm. is we haven't seen other other teams yeah. and no one's seen us and I think it's a real hidden adva- advantage that we have as an Australian population. We will play New Zealand before the Olympics and yes, that's probably that's, it. Mm. So you know we may have changed things, we may not have changed things, and um, hopefully we can you know shock some some teams and give them a surprise. And I'm sure other teams will shock us too with things that they mm. do. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's really exciting that preparation is very different. It's not ideal, but um, there's a positive from every situation and um, coming in. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. 